Hello everybody, welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be demonstrating today how to do stabilizing inside of After Effects. Keep in mind that Premiere does have this filter. Now they've moved this over to Premiere a few ver versions ago. The filter or the effect that we're looking for is called the Warp Stabilizer. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it. This does the exact same thing in Premiere that it does in After Effects, but I'm going to be showing it in After Effects because there are some projects you might be doing in specifically in After Effects where you need to use the Warp Stabilizer first to stabilize a shot and then to perform other effects to it. So I'm going to show this in After Effects so you know how to do it in After Effects as well. I'm going to grab a clip here and I'm going to edit this down to the shot that we need. And this shot actually starts where the dolly moves in. Right there where the dolly starts moving in, I'm going to put an endpoint there. Because I'm starting in Premiere, I'm going to actually send the, I'm going to send the duration of the clip over that I want. Instead of stabilizing the whole dang thing, I'm just going to stabilize uh, the shot that I'm using within the movie here. And there's my out point, I'm going to drop that into my timeline. And let's look at this shot in Premiere here really quick. So I've got a nice smooth dolly shot moving in here, then all of a sudden the camera operator kind of moves the camera a little bit to the side. Watch this, they're centered and well, kind of straightens out the tripod there. So the shot still looks pretty decent, but we've got that little issue at the end there. So we want to stabilize that. You can extract a clip out of your Premiere timeline and just do effects to those specific clips. When I do this, I usually grab the clip and I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and drag the clip up so I have a duplicate of the file. If I ever need to reference the original, there it is right there, but I'm going to send this top clip to After Effects. This clip is going to be, re be replaced by an After Effects composition. I'm going to right click on this and say Replace with After Effects Composition. After Effects will open up and ask me where I want to save it. I'm just going to call this Stabilize Dolly and save this. It is now sent over to After Effects. Let's look at Premiere. So Premiere, I have the original file there if I need to reference it for some reason. And I have the After Effects file right there that's in the After Effects comp that's, that has replaced the clip. So now any changes that we do in here in After Effects will update this composition right here in Premiere. And it kind of treats this like a video clip, but it's referencing After Effects. So in After Effects now, I'm going to range here by effects. I'm going to pull down my workspace and tell it to arrange by effects. So it brings up my little effects panel down here. And under my effects panel, I'm going to click in here and type in warp. It will bring up all the effects with the name warp in it. I'm going to scroll down and find my warp stabilizer right there. I'm going to grab this, drop it on the image over here, or you can drop it on the clip down here. Either way works. And it will start analyzing. Up here it's going to show you the progress of your analyzing. Right now it's going through the clip, it's detecting all the motion, it's detecting a whole bunch of different pixels in the image, and it's going to try to stabilize this thing detect, uh, based on where the pixels are moving. And uh, if the pixels are kind of here, it sees a bunch of pixels on the table and the people here, and all of a sudden the camera moves, it's going to try to keep that thing stabilized and keep it in the middle. We're going to let this, uh, we're going to let this analyze and then come back and look at what, what's happened here. All right, and as this finishes up here, uh, one thing I want you to notice is it changes from the frame count, how many frames it's analyzed, to the time remaining as well. So it gives you kind of an estimated time as well. And once the analyzing finishes, you'll see this bar come across that says stabilizing, sometimes solving the, the footage as well. So right now it's stabilizing, and this doesn't take as long as the analyzing does. And a couple things here. What it's going to do is, uh, let's show you what this does. Right now the borders, right here on the borders, the settings are stabilize, crop, and auto scale. Basically this uh, crops the edges off. First of all, it stabilizes this thing and you'll see the edges. Let's do stabilize only and show you what this is doing. As we move here, and all of a sudden where that dolly move happens, look what the shot is doing. It's basically taking this shot and moving it over to compensate for that movement in the camera. As the camera pans to the left, the whole shot, the, the After Effects takes the shot and moves it to the left. But now you see the actual borders of the video right here because it's actually physically moving this over. I'm going to turn up the smoothness here. I'm going to take it up to about 400% smoothness just so you can see the how extreme this gets. And there we go. That's a little bit more extreme there. As we play through this, you can see the shot. You can see, you'll see these edges kind of move in as there's variations in the camera movement. Right there is the biggest one. Notice how it moves the video clip over to keep these guys centered. And there it is on this side, and then it, when the camera moves back, the video clip moves to the left to compensate for that camera movement, locking these guys in the middle. But right now we are seeing the edges on both sides. So the standard here is to pull this down until it's stabilizing crop. It'll crop the video in as far as it needs to be 
to get rid of any movement visible, get rid of any visible movement on the edges. Right there, it's cropped it in as far as it needs to. So this does zoom up on the video a little bit in order to stabilize, which is fine if you're working with really high resolution. If you're working with anything HD, 1920 by 1080 on up, this usually works pretty well as long as your shot isn't terribly, terribly shaky. This works really well for kind of controlled moves like dolly moves and kind of stabilizing them in flight. And if you're doing drones and things like that, it usually does a pretty good job of stabilizing for those types of for those types of camera movement. If you got really shaky handheld stuff, it doesn't, it's not going to do too well. Right here, I'm gonna pull this option down on board and we're going to tell it to stabilize, crop, and auto scale. And it will zoom up for you and get rid of any of the dark borders on the side there and just leave behind the shot. Let's play through this and see how it looks. Here's the shot. And now this is incredibly smooth. Yeah, and we zoomed it up so, and you'll notice here on the, on the auto scale, it tells you how much it has to zoom up to get rid of those borders. It zoomed up 103%. This is 5K video, so that is not a whole lot. That's not losing a whole lot of quality here. This is still really nice quality video, especially if you're going to project this thing at 2K. It's going to look really, really good, even zoomed up a little bit. A couple things up here as well. Uh, stabilization types. You've got, you pull this down, you'll have either no motion or smooth motion. Let's show you the difference between smooth. Smooth motion is usually what you're going to be using. If especially if there's an intended movement like a dolly or like I said on a drone or something like that, you don't want to get rid of motion, you just want smooth motion. And this doesn't do as an extreme stabilizer as much as no motion does. Let's put it on no motion, show you what that does. And what that's going to try to do is make it look like there is no dolly movement at all. It is completely stabilizing this shot and it looks like there's really no dolly movement at all. It's got this weird perspective change. It almost makes it look like this is some sort of zoom dolly shot or something like that where it looks like the background stretching a little bit. You can see it stretching up here because the perspective is changing. But right there it is trying to stabilize them in the middle and you get kind of this weird look. And also you'll notice some kind of bending motion up here. Right now, um, so that's on no motion. I'm going to turn this back to smooth motion. But the more extreme movements you have, the more you'll start noticing this kind of subspace warp that's going on as well. Usually for most shots you're going to want to do this method. You're going to want to pull this down and you'll likely, depending on how drastic your movement is, you're probably just want, going to want to do position. Position is going to stabilize that kind of back and forth, up and down sort of movement. And for most shots, that will do just fine. Now, if you have issues with the, with the camera zooming in and out and you have issues with the camera rotating, you can try a position scale and rotation. And depending on how uh, drastic it is, if it's really shaky handheld, it's not going to do too well. If it's just kind of mild handheld, it usually, usually does okay on, on fixing and stabilizing that. Now perspective is if the camera basically tilts up or down and changes the perspective, it's going to try to fix perspective. This will only work on a few different instances. And subspace warp is really about the only thing you want to use subspace warp on is if you're getting uh, kind of that CMOS sensor jello effect where the top, and you get this on a lot of cell phones where the top is, especially when there's movement, you'll see the top kind of shake at a different rate than the bottom. And CMOS sensors do this kind of scan rate from top to bottom and the subspace warp tries to fix that and usually does a pretty decent job. But for shots like this with, these, with the dolly movement, you really just want to stick with position or the very, at the very most position scale and rotation. In this shot, I'm just going to stay with position and that way it's only zoomed up at 400% smoothness, it only has to zoom up because this shot isn't too extreme. It only has to zoom up 102% now with just position on. Of course, not trying to fix any subspace warp. Let's take a look at that. And that looks really good. It looks very, very smooth. Now, if we turn this off, let's, let's look at the before here. Here's our before shot. And you get that move, that correction to the left there, and then again to the right. And this basically, the stabilization basically gets rid of that. So once again, kind of the standard, if you just got some dolly shots that you're correcting or, or drone shots, you're probably just going to want to turn on smooth motion and down here, position and possibly position scale and rotation, and that's about it. And then on the on the framing, you're just going to tell it to stabilize, crop, and auto scale. And those are the major settings. Uh, there are some advanced settings under here here as well. If you get really really shaky video, video, you can experiment with these. But that that's essentially all you need to do with the warp stabilizer.